The creative process is the single most important, most powerful process that's ever been invented. Ever been invented. And I, I'm one that believes that the creator created us to create. Okay? I think we were created to create. Every invention, you know, we bow to the iPads, we bow to the phones, but that was somebody's creation, right? Somebody had to have the idea, okay? So when you use the skill of creating in music or in painting, the result is often art. And we're very familiar with that in the creative arts, okay? And so whether you're crafting something with your hands, whatever you're doing, you're really kind of bringing something into existence. And, I, and I want, I'm going to say this probably four or five times. Okay? And some of you are already bored to death and you haven't gotten it, and if you're bored at this point, you're never going to get it. Okay? Because there are people that can slip into the, it's kind of like slipping into a pair of shoes. People can slip into the creative process and there's other people that can't. So, another example of creating something. Creating is a process, it's not an event. Let me say that again. Creating is a process, not an event. And once you start creating, a couple things happen. You get smarter. <clears throat> you just get smarter. I, I've just spent four days with my mentor, Robert Fritz. Corbett and I were out with Robert again. And, you know, he and I both agree that, you know, We've gotten smarter and smarter over time. Why? Because you get in the creative process and the, you, you, you design something, you build something, and the next one is better. Uh, we have friends that have this beautiful house in North Scottsdale. And uh, Patty has a friend that lives in that house and we went and the woman is an artist that owns this house. Beautiful home. And she takes you through the home and one room was her earliest art and the next room was her next level of art, and now she's, she's a master artist. And she, you show, show her, her every, every room got a little bit better till the last, I mean, it was incredible. But the first stuff was just junk, okay? But she stuck with it, and in the creative process, you keep getting better and better and better. And the other piece about that is you never want to stop creating because there's a certain piece of creating that if you miss this, it's my fault. <laughs> and I don't want you to miss it, okay? So when you use the skill of creating and technology, the result is innovation and invention, okay? When you use it in athletics, and, and you use this and you begin to develop your body to achieve a certain outcome, okay? Here's the thing that's important to all great athletes and every great dentist I've ever worked with they are in love with what they're creating. Let me say it again. They care about bringing what they're doing into existence. Because if you didn't care enough about it, you wouldn't have the energy to do it. Huh? So it's absolutely the core of this is to find something that you care deeply enough about that you can, that you can get passionate about it to get your life involved into it. I'm absolutely, totally convinced that I do what I do. I'm a recovering dentist, okay? I hit the wall when I was 28. I ended up in the hospital because I was that guy flapping my wings and didn't know what to do. And I, I worked my way through dental school. I attended bar. My parents were teachers. And I was expecting it was going to be a lot better than it was. It was a mess and I hated it. I got sick every Sunday thinking about going to work on Monday. I ended up with an ulcer. So I'm like the mothers of drunk drivers, you know. I don't want other dentists to suffer with this. You don't have to. It's so easy not to if you just get a few things. So when you use the skill of creating and building a relationship between two people, the results are often a deep expression and relationship of love. And when you use creating to build a practice, the results are involvement, vitality, and growth. If you understand the creative process and you get into it, you cannot fail. When you use it to build a marketing plan, the result is attracting and keeping loyal, engaged patients. Okay? We've all worked with the wrong patients. Is it fun? Some of you are specialists working with the wrong dentist. How much fun is that? Okay? You know, we've all had those experiences. Okay? 
So when it's used in the sales process, the result is patients saying yes to options that reflect their aspirations and goals. Not your aspirations and goals, their aspirations and goals. When you get into the creative process, stay with me on this, should you get into the creative process and understand it for your own life, you can bring that to every person that you engage. Every person that you can engage with. So here's the deal. I'm going to walk through the steps of this because they're absolutely critical. Understanding that this is a form and not a formula. Understanding that. You've got to love the idea of the creation. You've got to love it enough to want to bring it into existence. Following? So if you really love it, then you love the process of doing it. It's not, a, it's not like, oh, this is difficult, this is hard. It's not something you're supposed to do, it's something you've chosen to do. Right? So the, the idea then is, okay, what are you going to create, right? You know, what are you going to have when you get done with it, right? What's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? What's it going to taste like? What's it going to act like? Okay? You've got to have the vision. Tim was saying when we were talking earlier about how I've always really focused on vision. I'm going to talk to you. There's a lot of people that don't have vision, and I'm going to tell you why they don't have vision. Okay? And I'm going to tell you how to get vision. It's really simple. But if you don't care about something, you'll never have the vision of it. Right? There's a lot of people that are just apathetic. They just don't care. Okay? A lot of the wrong people went into debt. They thought dentistry was going to be easy. Well, welcome to Scottsdale if you live here. Okay? So now the other piece that it's actually harder than vision is current reality. It's harder to see yourself objectively. It's hard for me to see myself objectively. It's hard to see our own reality. So you've got to describe what you currently have in relationship to what you want. What What's truthfully is there. It's really, it's, don't you find it hard to be truthful with yourself? Help me with this. I mean, it's easy to, to look at somebody else. Okay? We judge others by what we see and we judge ourselves by what we think and that's how we, how we become legends in our own minds. Okay? Most of us are walking around with this fictitious illusion of who we are because we don't really deal, we don't want to deal with reality. The truth is difficult. Would you not agree with this? Facing the truth about anything, about our, ourselves, is difficult. So is there a discrepancy between where I am and what I want? Okay. So we're going to talk about this because this is the fundamental piece of the whole issue that deals with the creative process. So I want you to have you pick up your rubber bands right now. Just pick them up. Play the game with me. Just play this game. So what I want you to do is I want you to do this with the rubber. I want you to give it a little bit of tension. Okay? Give it some tension so you feel it. Okay? Now, notice if I let go of the top and I have no vision, what happens to the rubber bands? Not going anywhere. There's no tension, right? So if I do the same thing and I let go of the bottom and I don't know where I'm going, there's no tension. So by, by telling myself illusions about myself by how good I am, if anybody ever told me I was the best dentist, I'd say that would have to be the, the only one in town. Okay? But a lot of people are, well, I'm the best dentist. Oh, sure you are. Yeah. Well, you're living with it. And so what people do when they think they're really good, they, they reduce the tension, right? I don't have to get better because I'm already there. Somebody said to me on the phone, this is really cool, 70% overhead, $1.2 million practice. Guy's losing about 150 grand a year. He says, I'm really close to my target. I go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, you just told yourself you're close to your target. So you just did what? You took all the tension away from moving toward. Does that make sense to you? Can you see this at work? Yes, no? So the issue here is we talk about this because when you know what you really, really want and you know where you really, really are, there is a dynamic tension to move towards it. And the issue of oscillation is the closer that you get towards it, right? Like if it's here, and the closer I get towards it, the less the tension. Right? So if, I, if I'm only setting a goal, like of weight loss, right, and as closer I get to it, the less the tension is on it, and guess what happens? A year later, I'm looking the same as I did the year before. Right? Unless I put an underlying structure in place that continues to make me advance towards what I want. So this is really profoundly important, and that came from Fritz. So it looks like this. 
Current reality is what you really, really have in any particular arena. Okay? It, it could be in, in, in the financial part, it could be in the sales part, it could be in whatever part of your life. It could be weight, it could be anything. It's what you really have. And vision is what you really, really want. Okay? And then you ask yourself, is there a gap here? Do I have a gap between what I want and where I am, right? And if there is a gap, then, then comes goals, systems, and actions to begin to move towards it. But if, there, if there's no desire, right? If there's no motivation, if there's no tension, have you ever done this with a patient? Raise your hands when I finish this. You've given a patient a solution to a problem okay, before they ask for the solution. Lots of time. Oh, yeah. You haven't given them the problem, right? Made them aware of the problem, with, and then you start solving the problem for them, and the next thing they ask us is, well, how much does that cost? Or what would the insurance pay? Or how long can I wait? We've all had that experience. And that's because we haven't put, we don't understand the issue of creative tension or structural tension and how it works. So structural tension is the fundamental principle in the creative process. People that understand that, when you go to really good movies, you'll see tension throughout the movie. You'll see tension in different colors. You'll see tension in different positions. You'll see tension built in relationships. Because those people really understand the creative process. You know who really gets the creative process? is Clint Eastwood. He really gets it. Love him or hate him, the guy really gets it. Okay? He knows how to build the creative process into everything. Why would we not, if we knew this, why would we not build the excitement of the creative process into our life, into our everyday life? Okay? So that the, the next part is taking action. Okay? So if we don't have the vision and you don't have the creative, or the current reality, you don't have the motivation to take action. Right? You wonder why people, you're sitting there with somebody and you wonder, why aren't they moving forward? You know, why aren't they, why aren't, you know, they should want this. They might just not care, right? Or maybe there hasn't been enough awareness and tension built to their current reality. Maybe they've, maybe they've lied to themselves. Maybe they're living in this illusion about how really good they are, right? They're rating themselves all tens when they're really fours, okay? okay? Maybe I didn't do a good enough job creating the awareness of what's really going on, right? So once we take action, no matter what action we take, We've got to take the action and we learn. We take it and we adjust. We take it and we modify. We take it and we improve because we never really take the exact right action. You know, to say that we're going to come out of the chute and everything's going to be perfect. So when things are moving in the positive direction, you're building the pattern, right? You built the pattern. You're moving in the right direction. You're, you're, you're in the process. One of the things that I was taught by Chuck Hogan in the early 1990s was the issue of celebrate. I would go, and when I play golf, I'd hit a five iron 200 yards away, that far from the pin, and I'd just look at it. And Chuck would say, you're not even going to celebrate that shot? How are you ever going to anchor that goodness? And, you know, all, all you do is walk around and complain about the bad shots. And look at, you're hitting 75% of your, your shots are pure, and 25% of them are off a little bit. You gotta, if you want more pure shots, you've got to celebrate them. How often, as we as dentists, do we, have, do we celebrate our progress? How, how often do we say, good job, to ourselves and to the people around us say that? Okay? So I think it's really, really important because you're in a process. Don't obsess about it because the process is, guess what? The process is our life, okay? You're in a process, you're on a journey called life, right? And we're going to love it or we're going to hate it or something in between, right? Some of parts of our lives go really good, some of our parts of our lives don't go so good. But if we understand this and we start building, mom we want to build momentum moving in the right direction, okay? So now we're going to live with the creation. Once we have it, we're going to improve it, we're going to nourish it, and you all know you're never done with it, right? Technology is changing at such a rapid rate. The culture is changing. 
people's needs, wants, demands, issues are changing. So you can't, we can't just say, now I've got it, but if we're on the right path, we can continue to improve it, continue to nourish it, continue to shape it. The result of this is you have another choice. Right now, I'm going to give you a choice. Now, I'm not asking you to vote on it. You have one of two choices. You can be in a reactive, disease-centered type of practice, which 95% of the dentists in the United States are. Okay, 90, dentistry looks worse to me than medicine today. And it's going the exact root of medicine. Okay? Okay. We're looking to problem solve, we're present focused, we're into transactions, we're looking to, for problems, because this is what we were trained to do. They always lead to reversal of outcomes. When you're problem solving, you never get what you really want. Okay? There's a 97% failure rate to achieve long-term objectives in problem solving. And by the way, that came from the weight loss. Wouldn't you like to be in the Nutrisystem business? Let's lose 10 pounds. Let's get six months of Nutrisystem. Okay, I've met my 10 pound goal. Okay, now I'm gonna put on 20 pounds. Now I'm gonna order another six months of Nutrisystem. Okay? You see, because the goal isn't really to be healthy, the goal is to lose weight. Once you get closer to the goal, we always what? Stop. Okay? It's just interesting, human behavior. Short-term, transaction-based is going nowhere. And it takes energy away from you. you. You could have a busy day. You could have a productive day. At the end of the day, you're just worn out. Okay? You can make a lot of money. If you read my book, The Science of Creating Wealth, and you read the first chapter in it, I talk about people that had billions of dollars and they lost it all. Because they weren't trying to become wealthy. They didn't understand that wealth is abundance. They were after making a lot of money. And, the, and then they risk all their money and then they lose it. It's really an interesting scenario about human behavior. They're trapped in the reactive side. On the creative side, you're outcome oriented. The focus is always the future. How do I get better? How, what's my future going to look like? You're future focused. Okay? It produces long term rewards. It brings excitement. Creating is energy generating. Okay? This is something you've all seen. Because Stephen Covey was the go-to guru for about 15 years. And he waltzed around the world talking about the seven habits of highly effective people, didn't he? First habit, be proactive. Okay? Effective people are proactive, ineffective people are reactive. Okay? These are his words, not mine. Begin with the end in mind. Ineffective people have no end in mind. Okay? Put first things first. <clears throat> ineffective people put nothing first. Everything's on first. Okay? They think win-win. Ineffective people think win-lose. I win, you lose. Seek to be understood and then be understood. <clears throat> See, first we want other people to understand us. Over here we want to understand them. Synergize. No, we're going to compromise. We're going to fight. We're going to compete. We're going to beat the other guy up. Okay? Sound familiar? Okay. Sharpen the saw. No, you're going to get worn out and burn out. Whenever you maximize profit or maximize production, I can assure you, you're on your way to burnout. It's optimizing. It's finding the balance. It's being in the sweet spot. It's being in the middle. So here's your choice. You can, you can get into a creative orientation, as I'm describing, or you can you can stay in, or compete in, or be in a reactive orientation. Let's understand that we're in, we're in a reactive orientation, it takes energy away from you. It's interesting because a lot of this presentation is just not mine, the whole staff worked on it, Corbin worked on it a lot, the whole team had input into what was going on, into this presentation, there's 150 hours in this presentation. So everybody was working on it, and I said, Corbin started working the other morning on it, and boom, three hours later. I'll go up to the house in Prescott, and I'm working, I start at five and one o'clock. And I go, where did the time go? When you're creating something that's important, you lose, you lose the sense of time. But when you're reacting, you, you remember every second. Okay? You're in it, and you hate it. But when you're creating, you love it. Chicks Mahali talked about that as flow. When you're in a flow experience, now pay attention to this, because this is important. There's another genius from the University of Chicago. What he's, he's teaching us something. And what he's teaching us is you get into flow when you have a challenging project and you have the skills to match it. 
What you, the other side is you experience frustration when you have challenge, but you don't have the skills to match it. See, the antithesis of that is boredom, right? Where you have, you have the skills, but you don't have the challenges to match it. What you experience is boredom. So what happens when you get into the creative process, you keep creating. And what the, what the, world, what the world does is it sends you more problems to solve. The more you can solve problems and the more you can help people, the more the world sends you people. That's the way the world works. Okay? Sometimes it takes a while. And the creative process incites energy. Following? So you can be doing the same thing. You can be doing the same root canal. And it could be reactive or it could be creative. You could put the same bracket and band on. It could be creative or it could be just reactive. Huh? You can do the same crown prep. It could be creative. So, it's the orientation of the individual, not necessarily the procedure. Somebody asked me the other day, how do you be a level three endodontist? I said, you're in a creative process. You're doing something that's, that's important to you. Remember, anything that we do that makes a difference in somebody's life in some way is important. So in the reactive, you, you move away from things. In other words, these are things you don't like, right? You'd rather not be doing. Whereas when you're in the creative process, you're moving toward. Does that make sense to you? It does to me. So when you move into the, and you step into the creative process, I'm simply going to say, and you learn how it works, I'm going to say that your life changes in a dimension you never even realized. And some of you are already in it, but don't really fully understand it, okay? So as you look now on the landscape, and you're looking out there, and you're just thinking to yourself, okay, you're sitting here, what's your vision? What is it that you want to create? What's important to you? Because it's always this gap, okay? You're always, when you get in the creative process, it's kind of like, it's like the, the horizon, or you, you're moving towards it, but it keeps moving away from you, okay? You, you never really totally get there, but you're on the process of getting there, okay?